Hey guys, welcome back to another video. This is Gabe with Indigo Software, genuine Microsoft software for less. In this video, we're taking you step-by-step -step through a complete beginner's guide to Microsoft PowerPoint. PowerPoint has had an updated user interface throughout the years, and they've slowly added new features. We're gonna be using Microsoft Office 2024 in this video. However, most of the functionality in PowerPoint has remained the same over the years. Therefore, this tutorial should help no matter what version you're using. We are on PC in this version, but again, if you're on Mac, the tools will still be applicable. The goal of this video will be to take you in depth through the entire program, showing you how to use it from the beginning to the end and actually presenting your PowerPoint. In terms of difficulty, this video will be more on the beginner side, but let us know in the comments if you'd like to see more intermediate or even advanced trainings in PowerPoint. Before we get started with today's video, if you're interested in purchasing Microsoft Office, Windows 10, Windows 11, remote desktop licenses, or a wide variety of other Microsoft software at a great price, be sure to check out Indigo Software. We'll leave links down below. So without further ado, let's jump in. All right, guys, so we're here on Windows 11. Let's go ahead and hit the start key. Or if you're on Mac, you can use the spotlight search in the top right hand corner of your screen. And we're going to type in PowerPoint. So if we type power, we can see it a few applications below. It's got that orange circular logo to it. And we're just going to click to open PowerPoint. OK, when we open PowerPoint, you're going to see something that looks like this. I'm going to refer to this as the file tab. This is kind of like our home screen for the application. As we can see on the home tab, we're going to have access to recent favorites or shared documents and PowerPoint documents are saved as a .pptx. This is basically like a project file. So I can save this and I can transfer this or share this and I can reopen it. It's going to save everything that I've created inside of my PowerPoint. So we can see I have a few of them below here. We've also got this little new section up here. The new section is going to allow us to start from a particular theme if we wanted to. We could also click more themes and that's going to bring us to the new tab. So again, I could also just click down to it. And again, we have blank I have my company meeting title. I could also search for different templates if I wanted to use them, or as these are referred to in PowerPoint, themes. So these themes are like a preset, or again, a template that will let me get started with my PowerPoint and not have to make all the design decisions from scratch. For the purpose of demonstration, we are gonna start in a blank presentation, but just know that you can search for specific things here. For example, maybe education. I can find different PowerPoints that somehow relate to education. You can really search for anything that you'd like here. Now, before we actually go into a document, let's go ahead and finish with the main homepage here. The next tab is open. Open is going to give us more features to retrieve and open documents. So for example, I could click this PC and now I have some folders that are local on my PC. Maybe I have some PowerPoint saved in one of these folders. I can access that from here. I could also add a place. The options we're getting here are OneDrive or OneDrive for business. I also have browse and that will let me use File Explorer to locate a specific PowerPoint. All right, now moving all the way down on the left-hand side, we have account options. This is going to give us our licensing options. For example, we could switch licenses. We can see I'm actually on Office Plus 2021. If I wanted to switch to 2024, I could do that here. I also have access to 365 and updates, get add-ins or about. And we have a few other things like our account. So again, we can switch our account from here. We can also manage our settings, so our privacy settings. So here I can adjust things that will protect my privacy. So for example, turning off optional diagnostic data uh, might be a good thing for privacy. Okay, we also have our office background. We can change this if we'd like. Let's try circles and stripes, for example. And then we can change our theme from the default might be dark gray on the newer versions, but we could choose anything, for example, like our system setting. I'm going to keep it on dark gray for now. I like that one the most. Okay, and then we also have our storage services and the options that we'll get for that are OneDrive. Clicking down another one, we have options. This is going to give us our setting menu and these settings are going to be grouped by their relevant category. So for example, save language accessibility, and we'll also be able to customize our ribbon from here, which we'll get into a little bit later. The last thing worth mentioning about PowerPoint is we've got some options up here. So we have our help options, and then we also have our account tab here, so we can quickly access these at any time if we need to. Okay, so now that we've walked through that, let's go ahead and enter a blank presentation. So when we enter a new document, the first thing we're gonna notice is we have a lot of options up here on the top. Now, if you're familiar with Office applications already, you might be familiar with this layout, but if you're not, we're gonna go through it anyways. So at the very top, we have what are called tabs. Tabs are gonna give us an entire set of tools that are relevant to the name of the tab. So we have insert, draw, design, transitions. Some of these also change 
as we're accessing tools. Underneath the tab, we have what's called the ribbon. The ribbon is this entire gray part right here. And this basically goes the entire length of the screen. In the ribbon, we have what's called groups, and the groups are separated by these little lines here. So the groups will even further narrow tools that sort of belong together. The ribbons and the tabs are very frequently accessed as that's where we're gonna find all of our tools for editing our PowerPoint. Okay, so once we're inside, we're gonna start usually on our title page. If I just click into that, we can see that my cursor is now active on the page and I can go ahead and type my title. We're gonna type PowerPoint demonstration. And if we'd like, we could add a subtitle. And here I'm gonna type by Indigo software. All right, and then as you can see, we're also seeing lines that are going to help us to size and center anything that we're adding to our document. Now, as we can see, the text that's added here are separated into two separate text boxes. So I can click into these and adjust them at any time. And in the home tab, we're gonna find our font section here, which will give us control over our text. So let me go ahead and triple click this to select all. Let's try changing our font to something else. So I'll click down on this little arrow. Maybe I wanna click this font here. And then maybe I want the subtitle font to be something different. Now we can see I also have a little mini ribbon that pops up here, or I can access it from the top. So let's find something that sort of complements our main title. Okay, I like the look of this font Cambria, so I'll select that. If I wanna adjust the size, I can click down next to this number and change the size of the title. Maybe I'll click it down one to 54. And then we also have our typical bold italic underline options. We also have one that will give us a drop shadow. We've got a few more like line out and then we can adjust spacing and caps and other things like that. Now, once I'm already inside of a document, I can still access themes. If I go over to the design tab, at any point, I can actually go through and select one of these themes if I want it to look good without really having to do all of this manually. So we have variant themes, and these are basically just gonna give us different color palettes. And then we have our design themes, which again will give us sort of a fresh new look. So I'm gonna click on this theme here because I think this looks a lot nicer than it just being a straight black on white. So I just click on it and it's going to apply to my entire PowerPoint. Let's say we're done with our title page and I wanna make a new slide. There's a few ways I can do that. First is to go to the insert tab here in the top and I can click into new slide and then clicking the arrow will give me options for what type of slide I want it to be. I can also right click into here and click new slide, which will not give me the options on what kind of slide it is. Again, those are two ways to add a new slide. So I'll go ahead and start working with this slide right here. I'll enter a title. Now following with the default settings in PowerPoint, I can click into my text here and it's gonna give me bullet points. So for example, I could type and if I enter, it'll create a new bullet. And if I enter again, it'll create a new bullet and so on. Now, if you want to add bullet points at any point, we're gonna find those settings back on the home page here. So I have bullets right here. I could select these and click this to remove them or I could add them back. I could also change this to numbers by clicking the numbering right here. And maybe that is what I wanna do. Maybe I wanted to keep it as numbering. Now I can change my alignment and various other things that you might be familiar with already, especially if you use Microsoft Word. For now, I'm good with this. Let's go ahead and continue typing. Okay, so I've added some text here and I think this is a great start to the document. The next thing that we're gonna show you guys is the insert and the draw tab. This is going to give us further ability to customize or add to our slides. So starting on the insert tab, we have something called pictures. Now I can either load a picture from this device or I could search for stock images or I could even search for online pictures directly in PowerPoint. Let's try that option. And this is going to be powered by Microsoft Bing. Maybe I wanna add something like a computer icon. So I'll just search computer. Maybe I wanna insert this little icon just to help add something to the sheet. So by clicking on this, Again, we can see this little box come up and I can click and drag in the corners to resize this. Now we've got our image inserted. We can click and drag it around and it's gonna kind of snap into various positions around the page, which will help us get the layout correct. Now, as you can see, when I have this selected, it pulls up a new tab called picture format. This is gonna give me a whole lot of options to change the picture. So for example, I could sharpen or soften the image. I can adjust the color on it. I can add artistic effects or transparency, and I can also change other things such as the border. For now, let's go back to the insert tab as I wanted to show you guys the additional settings that we have in here. So we've got date and time. The next big thing would be shapes. We can easily insert shapes such as arrows. So let me click this arrow, and now I can just drag each end of the arrow to resize it to how I want it to look. We can also insert screenshots. Now there's also icons that we can use. So if I click icons, we've got a whole bunch of them here that we can use completely for free within PowerPoint. Maybe I wanna use a document here to sort of convey my point. Again, I'll click on it first, and then I can click and drag to resize it to where I want. If you hold control while resizing, it's gonna keep it in the same position and just enlarge it rather than dragging just one corner, which changes its position. 
All right, next up, we have the draw tab. So the draw tab is going to give us the option to draw directly onto our document. And so with this tool selected, I can draw or maybe I can like hand write anything I want to. And again, I'm just clicking with my mouse to write and draw using what is the, I believe the pen tool. So we've also got a pencil tool that we can use to draw around the document. And we also have a highlighter. Maybe we want certain things to stand out in our PowerPoint. So we might highlight that. And so we know to kind of go back to that as we're presenting. In addition to some of these tools here we also have the erase tool so if i want to get rid of some of this stuff i can just click it and delete that delete that delete that delete that i'm just clicking it with my mouse nice and easy here we have like a colorful marker type of tool and then a few shortcuts that you can also get familiar with one of them is command or control and z together that is the undo action so control z or command z if you're on mac i also have options to undo and redo right here okay so we've got undo and redo and we can easily use those at any time another thing we have is ruler I can basically drag my rule in here and measure out anything that I want to. Now, if I use my mouse wheel, I can change the angle of the ruler. For example, if I want to measure things that are diagonal or not quite horizontal or maybe vertical, that's how I can change this here. And then clicking this will make it go away. Here we have a button called ink to shape, which automatically refines hand-drawn shapes. So for example, if I was conveying a point here and I wanted to draw maybe like an arrow pointing to this information, let's click ink to shape and see what happens. As we can see, it looks a little bit better. All right, guys, we're going to move on now to the design tab. So we already kind of covered this one earlier, but a few extra points worth mentioning are these slide sizes. So we can change this from a standard four to three aspect ratio to a 16 by nine. We also have format background. This is going to give us different options. For example, if we wanted to gradient fill our background, or we could choose a solid fill or a pattern fill. So we can change this to, again, just kind of further customize our slide. And this is going to be a very useful page to use as you're creating your PowerPoints. All right, guys, next up we have transitions. So I click on a morph transition. We can see that there's now a transition that happens between the last slide and this slide. I'm going to click undo to remove that. And let's just try maybe a few other ones. So one of them we could try is reveal. This is going to give us a dynamic sort of push in fade out reveal. And again, anytime I click a transition, it's going to apply it to the gap between this slide and the previous slide. I'm going to go ahead and remove the transition. And now let's try an animation. The animation will give us the ability to add little transitions, essentially, but directly on our shapes. So if I click on our computer here and let me see some other options, I'm going to try a fade. So now when I go to the next slide here, it's going to fade this on. And we're actually going to see this in the presentation mode or the slideshow mode. So it's not going to show up just yet. All right. So going into the slideshow mode, this is where we actually do our presenting so we could play our narrations we could record this if we want to we can change our monitor settings basically some general customization here and then if we want to go into presenting we hit play from beginning here and then this is where we can present our powerpoint so by clicking this i can access our pen or a highlighter this will help me to convey points as i'm presenting we also have our windows this button will let us see all slides here we have a zoom in and then here we have black or unblack slideshow so if we want to black it out we can do that and then here we can toggle the camera if you have a camera available. And then last up, we have this little three dots here and we can use this to end the show. And we have a few other options as well. So once we're in here, we can use the arrow keys on our keyboard to navigate. Or for example, if you're using a remote control or something like that, we can use that here. Okay, now in order to see that animation that we did, if I go next and then I hit the arrow key again, that is where the animation takes place. And that's because I've added it after the fact. So again, if I hit the arrow key and then if I hit next again, if I had another slide, it would bring us to the next slide. So for now, let's go ahead and click end slideshow. It's also worth noting that we have taskbar or display settings here. Let me go ahead and hit end slideshow for now. Now we also have a page for record. This is gonna let us screen record directly inside of PowerPoint. By clicking on that, it's gonna bring up this screen and I can basically click and drag over my entire screen. And with the area selected, I could hit record. Okay, so we are now screen recording inside of PowerPoint. This is recording the left screen actually, so not this screen, but I could go ahead and do any actions inside of this screen. And let's go back into PowerPoint. So when I record the screen, this is actually going to automatically save it to the PowerPoint afterwards. Now, one more thing about screen recording I forgot to mention is that we actually can turn on our audio if we would like to. So I can turn it on or I could turn it off. And let me go ahead and X out of this and go back to PowerPoint. We are able to adjust our audio settings. If I go into my settings, 
settings. So go to file and options at the very bottom left. It automatically uses your system audio settings. So if you want to change your input device, use a different microphone, you'll just need to change it in your window settings and that will apply here as well. So again, I have my ability to screen record. This comes up when I'm selected on a slide and then I can also save this as a show or I can export to video. And this would allow me to record my entire presentation, including the timings, narration, ink and laser gestures, etc. Now, a few other tabs that we have worth going over are the review tab. This is going to give us our proofing, accessibility, language, and other settings like that, as well as the ability to leave comments. And lastly, the view tab will give us different viewing options that may or may not work better for you. So we've got options like zoom, grayscale, and a few other things as well. All right, let's go back to the home tab and I'm going to enter a new slide. We're just gonna show you guys how we put together a new slide now that we've sort of covered all of the topics. In this slide, we're gonna talk about screen recording. I'm gonna to click to add to text here. Now, as we can see, I can resize this text box. And for example, if I want to add another text box, I can easily do that. Go to the insert page. And here we have an option for text box. Now I can click and drag to create the size of the text box that I want. Maybe I want this to be a caption for an image that I'm about to insert. I'll leave my text box here. Let's go ahead and add an image here. And I'm going to do pictures, stock images. I'm going to add this image of a microphone here. I'm not finding what I need from stock images. So let me try the online pictures again. Here we have a little presentation image here. Maybe I want to use this. And again, I can insert a text box here. Maybe I want to insert captions and write PowerPoint presentation or something like that. Again, you have the ability to add text and also move it around your document. And this will help you along the design process, just knowing that you can add and move in things wherever you need. My original text box is not here anymore. One thing I can do is I can actually copy and paste. Let's say I want to copy this text box entirely. So clicking on the text box, I'm going to hit Control C to copy and Control V to paste. So clicking into this text box, I will select everything, Control C. See, going back into this document, I'll control V. That's going to paste in that text box. If I want, I can move this around, resize it, or maybe I just want to add another new text box to go ahead and start working on my text here. We had one, I believe, size similar to this. And again, I can add my numbers and we're going to start with screen recording in a slide, or maybe number two is exporting the presentation. Okay. So I've written some text here. All right. Now, one more thing that's worth mentioning before we end the video is at the very top here, we have what's called a quick access menu, and this can also be custom. Customized. We can customize it very quickly using this little drop down here. We have auto save, save, undo, redo, and start from beginning here. Maybe I want start from beginning gone and maybe I want to add email. So now I can again access any of this at any time. And if I click this, we're going to automatically open Outlook and we can now access our email. So maybe I want to email this to somebody. I can now click on this and it's going to automatically attach that using Outlook. So again, I'm signing into my Outlook and I could send this to a desired recipient and they will have my PowerPoint all from within PowerPoint itself. Going a step further to customize that. If I go back to options, we have quick access toolbar here where we have access to even more settings. And if I click on, for example, email, which we just added in there, I could click on it and I could remove. And maybe since we know we're using bullets a lot, I click on this and click add. And so again, we can adjust that. We can do basically the same thing to our ribbon. So any of these tools we might want to remove or add, we can do that here. And when we're done, you simply hit OK. All right. So at this point, you can continue building your PowerPoint. And we recommend making good use of the home tab as well as the insert tab. Those are probably going to be your most two frequent tabs and also remembering that you can use transitions or animations to sort of help add a bit of dynamic interest inside of your PowerPoint. All right, guys, that's going to do it for today's video. If you have any questions about anything that we covered, please drop those in the comments below and we'll get back with you as soon as we can. Again, if you're interested in purchasing genuine Microsoft software at a great price, be sure to check out Indigo Software. We'll have those links down below. As our channel continues to grow, we're constantly looking for new video topic ideas to make. If there are specific videos that you'd like to see, we strongly encourage you to comment those down below. Most commented viewer requests get made into actual videos. Lastly, a like and subscribe would be greatly appreciated as it helps to support the channel. Thanks again for watching. We'll see you guys next time.